two screens. The main one is 6.7 inches, 120 hertz, full HD+, AMOLED with a slightly taller aspect ratio that folds in half. Because of that, you will have to deal with a crease. Two things. Yes, you can feel it if you run your fingers over it. And yes, it is visible depending on the angle. But honestly, if I'm looking at it straight on like this, it really isn't that noticeable. If you're outside, the crease does become more visible because there's just so much more light and reflections. It hasn't bothered me too much, but we're all different. This is one of those things you'll have to experience for yourself to see if you can live with it. This also has stereo speakers, so for a phone that you can fold into a pocket-friendly square, you're still getting a pretty solid movie watching experience, especially content shot in widescreen. Oh, I do want to bring this up. When the phone is closed, you'll notice there's a slight gap in between. It's not all that bad, but that space tends to attract dust and lint from my pockets and ends up on the screen. Internal screen is still more likely to break than others. If for no reason other than you'll invariably end up pushing into some part of it to close the device. I've yet to damage the Flip 3 screen, and I've been careful not to push my thumb into the middle of the panel to close the phone, but I have been shutting it with some force. Whether the durability is indeed improved is something that's hard to tell without months of testing or deliberately trying to damage the device, so I might have to revisit this after some time. Speaking of closing the phone, like its predecessor, the Flip 3 isn't easy to shut with one hand. It can be done, but the hinge is stiff and provides enough resistance to let it stay open at various angles. 